Pete live. Home, welcome back to the Ike Live show. We are just uh, assembling, getting back from our break and uh, pee breaks. <laughs> pee breaks. Ike's coming back over to his spot. BTC, yes, you're, sir. You're getting ready for your first derby of the year. That's right. Yep, derby. Uh, you- Saturday on the flats with uh, with Travis Manson, aka Smallmouth Crush. Looking forward to it, man. I haven't fished him forever, so. Awesome. Are you going to get out there and before any time? No. Just going to go? I'll be lucky to get some time to get my rods together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Friday night will be a near sleepless night in the shop trying to get my tackle organized. Awesome. So, but whatever. Uh, it'll be fun. It's good. I'll be, I'll be ready. It's time of year, man. Everybody's still getting their personal best around here. Oh, my God, dude. Everybody. everybody everywhere you jacking big ones. Everywhere you look, man. It's torture. It's pre-spawn fish. Yep. Did you see uh, Life of Riley's giant? Yeah, I did. Seven, seven plus range yeah. on a on a, yeah. a finesse jerk bait. We're calling it eight pounds. Look like eight. Yeah. He didn't. Why doesn't he have a scale? Well, I asked him that. Dude, exact James question. Riley has. I swear to you, he has everything. Ten thousand dollars worth of jerk baits. And that's not. I'm not even. Uh, dude, would you? Wouldn't you say he has ten thousand dollars worth of jerk baits? He has the top of the line Japanese rod and reel scenarios from Daiwa, Shimano. Dude, he's got everything. He's got the best waders, the best hip waders. He doesn't have a scale. Like a rappel of scale costs like 30. Yeah. But I want to know because I want to know. Like I looked at that yeah. fish and it's hard to guess in the photo. Yeah. Could be seven, could be seven and a half, it could be eight. Well, it could be six. It could be six, six. Who he, knows? He hollered at me. Yeah, he actually bought me a scale for Christmas one year. Wow! Because he caught a big fish and I didn't yeah. have a scale in the boat. Wow! We had to drive around to find a scale. Wow! And uh, I know. <laughs> that's why he doesn't have one. That's, that's, have one. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, so it's my fault. It's well. <laughs> let me let me exactly. tell you. Well, Damn. speaking of scales <laughs> and speaking of big fish and weighing big fish, there's no denying that our guest coming up right now. Uh, has weighed a lot of big fish and did weigh a lot of big fish to win the recent Major League Fishing Tournament. Um, the neat thing about it is I was it was a driving day for me right now. I hope nobody from the state police is listening because I, <laughs> I watched live the whole day while I was driving most of the day. Oh, <laughs> I know that's totally illegal. Uh, but I did, I did watch, and I got to see it go down. And uh, I had a feeling, man. You know when you look at you look at the the list of the ten guys that qualify, and you're like, you're like, yeah, this guy's fishing good. This guy's on a roll. This guy's on a streak. This guy's got the momentum. I had a feeling, man. I, I really did have a feeling. I don't I don't want to say I'm a psychic, but I had a feeling about this guy. Uh, and he weighed a tremendous amount of big fish, not in, not just in qualifying, but in the championship round uh, on Sharon Harris to win. The third stop of the BBT, BPT tour, and uh, man, I'm, I'm stoked for him. I'm happy for him. We've got live joining us live via Skype, the one and only recent winner of the Raleigh Durham stop on uh, MLF, Jacob Prosnick, joining us. Jake, hey guys, how you doing? Jake, <laughs> good, good thing I didn't wear my red hook shirt. I know, Jake. How you doing tonight, man? I'm good. I just got back from my mom's birthday party. Woo! Happy <laughs> birthday to mom! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, I dude, I did have a feeling. You want to know why? I'm going to tell you why I had a feeling. Me and you were sitting... Where were we talking? At the Classic. Me and you were talking yep. at the Classic. We were up at... You know, when, when you go to weigh in before they drag into the Coliseum, you know, you have a lot of time. And, and Jake was doing good in the Classic. I was doing okay. So we knew we weren't going to be pulled in the last. So we're sitting there talking and we're like, oh, dude... MLF coming up on, at Raleigh Durham, we're like, yeah, Jordan's got him, you know, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, the other one's got him, and then we were talking about Sharon Harris, you know, and I, yeah. let me tell you if I remember this, and I'm like, man, I hadn't fished there, but man, I heard that place has got a lot of deep hydrilla. I was like, man, I hope I make it because I want to get out in that deep hydrilla. And Jake, you said, yeah, you can keep that hydrilla because I. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember saying that? And when you said yeah. that, when you said that, you had such confidence. And I'm like, damn. I'm like, he makes it to the final. He's going to do all right, man. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of knew that was my prediction. Did Did you know, like, you were the probably the only one in the top ten that had fish there. Did you know going in, though, that, that, 
did you have a mindset that you were going to win? Did you have a mindset that you knew what you wanted to do during that day? You know, I, I thought that if they were doing what I wanted them to do, I'd have a chance at catching not a lot of big ones, but a lot of numbers. You know, uh, in past in past there, uh, we used to go up there and look for look to catch a nine or ten pounder off the bed. And so you're going down the bank and you just you're looking and looking and looking, and there'll be just gobs of two to three pounders and four pounders that were on the bed around that sawgrass, you know? So right. I knew if they were on that sawgrass and the water was a little bit dirty where they weren't like really shy, where I could actually fish for them the way I wanted to fish for them. I, I figured I might have a chance, you know, and, and we started off the first period. Well, we put, well, as soon as we put the boats in the water, the first thing I did was I turned on my, uh, I turned on my Lowrance and dropped my trolling motor in the water. I just wanted to see what the water temperature was. Cause I never went over there and looked around and, uh, my, my water, the water temperature said like 65, nine, and that was at daylight. So I was like, yeah, they're spawning somewhere on yeah. this lake. You just got to find them. Yeah. That's awesome. Now I, I got to tell you, um, I watched live and I, the two things that stuck out to me is one is I watched a segment where you were set up on a bed and fish and I, it was early. I want to say it was the first period. And man, you fished it and fished it and fished it, and finally you got that thing to go, and it come off. It come off like on the hook yeah. set. Like I think you 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 traversed it across the boat. And at that moment, yeah, that was... yeah my my heart sank because I'm like, oh god, like because I know the time pressure. What what did, was that a good thing that that happened at that moment, or what what was going through your mind? I, I wish I'd have never seen it. You know what I'm saying? Would have been the best thing, but. There was a, that was about a three or three and a half pounder, maybe. It was just a buck and there was, but there was a six and there was a six pounder and one about seven pounds trying to swim up there with it. So wow. that's why I kind of messed with it a little bit. And then it, then it got into the point where I was going to catch it no matter what or lose it or something, you know? So it was more of a, like that, but I just, I, I wish it would, I would have never ran into it because that was the dumbest move I'd made that whole day you know, was fishing for that thing for like 25 minutes. And, right. you know, in that time I probably could have caught for maybe three or four, you know, just absolute, just fishing down the bank. And, but, you know, thank, thank the good Lord that it didn't, uh, that it didn't, you know, cost me the, the tournament because Ali, man, Jacob, he got on an absolute roll there for a little while. And it was like, man, I was 14. I think I was 14 pounds, 11 ounces behind at one time. And, you know, and and Mike, I got to give you credit on this. You, you're that never give up attitude sticks out in my mind all the time. Like, you know, like, hey, don't and don't even think about it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. He, he might not never get another bite the rest of the day, and you could catch 16 pounds and still win. So just go out there and do what you got to do, and and just don't even worry about that. At the end of the day, let it be. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Now, here's the second thing, Pete. I know you got some questions for Jake too, but. The second thing is, I I want to mention, and I know this is an obvious one, but I want to mention that going into the North Carolina events, everyone really put their spinning rods away. I mean, not just the anglers, not just the other 80 guys, the other 80 competitors, but like fans, like everybody was like, get your spinning rods, put that shit away, <laughs> put that shit, because there's big ones in here. And dude, I I was so happy. As I was watching, because being a Jersey guy, that's the shit. That's the shit we did from day one. We spin and rod fish because that's the only way you can catch them, dude. I was so happy to see that. Are you surprised that so many people are blown away by the fact that you won this in a place with giants where they don't normal, you know, dudes aren't using spinning rods, and you essentially won it spinning rod fishing, finesse fishing. Are you shocked by that? Are you surprised that people are so so blown away by that? You know, I hope they don't ever throw spinning rods. <laughs> 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 you, you know, this, hey, Mike, this is the best way that I can say it is. You know, a seven foot two spinning rod is the same blank as a seven two foot casting rod. The eyes are just pointed down on a spinning rod and the eyes are pointed <laughs> up on a big I mean, what's the difference? That's true. <laughs> That's true. That's very true, man. That's well. That's really cool, and you're exactly right. I, I don't. There is no difference except for you can use certain baits better uh, with a with a spinning rod versus a bait caster. But you did it, finesse. Let me let me get into you th this way, Jacob, because you were talked about a little bit. You were you were sight fishing, and I heard you uh, talk do some self talk 
uh because i'm i'm crazy and i i talk to myself on the water all the time too <laughs> and and you were like man I, I i'd probably be better off if if i just went down the bank fishing uh and they see that thought occurred to you what what put you over the top said all right i'm gonna stop sight fishing and, I, and i'm just gonna go down the bank fishing in these spawning areas you know that it really when it really dawned on me was when like I seen I seen a I seen a bass on the bed, and uh, so I spun the boat around and like I never threw at it and I, I spun the boat back around and I made a long cast with that wacky Cinco the uh, the chop the V and M chopstick and and when it hit the water, that bass took off and run about four feet and ran over there and ate it. So in my wow. mind right then they were you know they they were ready to bite you know what I'm saying. So if I could land something and get near them. In my in in my mind, I thought that I could just cover as much water as I could. If I got that bait around one, no matter what size it was, it was going to eat it. And you know, in the format that we're fishing now, every bass counts. And I don't care if I catch a hundred one pounders or ten ten pounders; they're all going to weigh the same. Yeah, and you had big ones too. That's the other thing. It's not like you you weren't targeting small fish. You were targeting fish that wanted to bite, and it, it wasn't. Yeah, the, it was everything across the board: big ones, medium size, little ones. They were all eating it, you know. And and this is and this is the way I look at it. You can you can take something and flip down the bank, and you might you know if there's ten bass in that pocket, you might get three of them to bite. But if I come through there with that chopstick, I'm gonna get all ten of them to bite. Yeah. All right. Now yeah. I want to I want to know a l- little bit of technical. I, I I don't. This is Ike Live, not BU, so we're not gonna go too deep in the technique. But I do. I was watching in my mind, wanting to know, Jake. Tell us about your braided line type and size and your leader line type and size and then talk about the hook a little bit they were the three things running through my mind that i wanted to know as i was watching all right so there there i threw 20 pound uh high seas braid to a 15 pound high seas leader you know something that i could swing three pounders in the boat with a little heavier have to get down there and kind of mess around with them. Yeah. And the hook is a it's a Mustad Nico wacky worm hook that is designed last year that that Mustad has come out with, and it's just one of those hooks that ninety nine percent of the time you catch everyone that bites. You know, I lost that one right there towards the end of the third round that was about a four or maybe a five pounder. But you know, I had that fish hooked in the tongue, and she come up and went upside down and just come off and. You know that that stuff happens in in bass fishing. You're not going to catch them all, but not nine times out of ten, that hook is 100. percent You know, so it's it's yeah. probably the best wacky worm hook you can throw. That's awesome. That's awesome. Dude, we, we, I was wondering, was it weedless? Because you were throwing up into that hay grass and and uh, or what? I don't, I forget what you call that weed, but saw grass. Saw grass. Was it? Uh, were you weedless or were you exposed? No, I had it exposed. You know, I used that up. Uh, Bass Pro Shop sells that little wacky worm tool that has the little black rings on yeah. it, and like you can catch, you can catch five or six bass on on one worm. I mean, as you can see during during that uh, during the actual tournament, like I don't know how many times I'd catch one, get it in the boat, just slide that hook back over the ring, and continue fishing, and never never you know never waste the time putting another worm on or anything. Well, I I was watching you go at it, man, and you you started it must have been cool where you were starting to catch up and you're starting to pass them and then you took you took the lead you guys were like toe to toe battling back and forth i i got i gotta say i was if i were you i'd be praying for the time to move fast (laughs) what is that like man when you're at the end you got a three pound lead you're like come on end come on just just end 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 (laughs) i I never I never really thought about it until he says, Jacob, you have five minutes remaining in the period. You're still on top. You have a three pound, nine ounce lead. And then, then, I mean, and you could tell that I got to breathing like real hard, you know, and I was, I, I you know, then it was like, yeah, please come on. I mean, <laughs> like I felt like I lost 20 years of my life in that last five minutes. You know? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a really, really cool aspect of the, emotions that goes on in major league fishing you know the the highs the lows the you're on top you're excited then all of a sudden you're down and you know it's just it, it, that's what keeps it going and, and the competition part of it man it, it just it just makes us roll you know I, I got home monday and i think i just woke up a little while ago to uh 
you know, getting some rest and stuff, man, it, it just, it, it drains you, but yeah. It, yeah. it's like the, the excitement in, in being out there and fishing in that is, is way, way more exciting than anything that I've ever done. All right. Now I, 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 nice segue right here. And I do want to put you on the spot and you don't have to answer if you don't want, but, uh, I, I do have to ask you, Jake, you've won a BASS elite event a few years back, really big moment for you in your career. I know that. And now you've won uh, MLF uh, Bass Pro Tour event. Um, is there a difference? Do you feel different about one of the wins? Is one more important than the other, or are they they both about the same same kilter? You know, they they're probably both both about the same kilter because we were fishing against the same guys. You know, I was right. fishing against the same guys when I won it then, and I'm fishing against the same guys in this now. So it's uh, I would say it's you know, to win one of those, to win a Bassmaster Elite event was the like the highlight of my career. You know, that was my first like major top tour level win. And then to do this, and and I hope this doesn't offend anyone, but to be able to do it before you, Mike, or Kevin Van Dam, or Greg Hackney, or Skeet Reese, or any of those guys to be the third one to win something like this, that means a, a, a whole lot. You know, because I've looked up to you guys, and you know, Van Dam's got. 25 wins you know you're never going to be able to catch his uh, catch that over there you know on the yeah. on the elite series but now we're, we've started this you know it, it's just something that that means a lot you know yeah. this is the third tournament and uh and i'm one of the winners so it, that's what has a lot of prestige in it that's awesome well i can tell you i want to win one bad pete i could smell that shit <laughs> I smell it i well, smell it well, I, I, I believe one. we watched you win one over the weekend yeah, that's right. Yeah. That was a cup event. That's a cup <laughs> event. But I want to win a tour event. Uh, I'm looking, uh, Jake, I'm looking at our, I'm trying to, I know these guys are watching YouTube and they're watching Facebook. I'm watching the Instagram feed a little bit. And I've got a one, the question that came through from Steve Pellegrino. And he wants to know, he says, basically, I don't even understand this question, but it says, Jake, I watched live on your final day. Why do you hate cameramen? I don't even know what that means. Do you hate right, the camera so, guy? <laughs> so during the uh, during that period, during the second period when I fished for that one on the bed, the cameraman that I had, uh, like the, the that bass was biting me every cast. It would bite me every flip. Yeah. And she would only, or he would only get it for like just a second. So I knew I had to like, kind of like just get her when she got it, you know, or, yeah. or vice versa. And I finally get it like really biting, aggressive, chasing the bait. And he asked me to, to look at the camera and tell the folks at home what exactly I was doing. And I said, damn, man, I'm fishing. And that was kind of like the end of it. And nothing nothing to the camera, man. It was just... Oh, wow. I like uh, it. See, we were funny. we were talking about live earlier. <laughs> yep. And see, I like it. This is the reality. They yep. should show all that. Yep. I like it. People should accept it. And not get all freaked out about uh, it. I man. think it, I think it's awesome. I I thought I also heard you uh, holler at the cameraman to not move. Like I think you saw a fish, and you said nobody move, freeze, freeze. Yeah, he, uh, there was one. Uh, it, it actually turned out to be a carp, but it was sitting. I can only see like the the tip of its head sticking out underneath that that uh that sawgrass. And I said don't move because I'd pulled down, and when I stood back up, it was sitting there. So I didn't know if it was a big bass, just kind of parked and wasn't yeah. to move and i didn't want him to kind of jump around and then uh and then i told him one time to get out of my way i couldn't cast <laughs> you know so it was a, but i mean he was a it, uh rick is a rick is a great cameraman did a did a fantastic job you know just you know i mean they got to do what they got to do but sometimes they you know they get in our way and we just sometimes be nice about it sometimes just get caught up in the moment. <laughs> All right, I got one more I want to uh, do here on Instagram. It's from Hardcore VA Angler, Hardcore Virginia Angler. He wants to know, Jake, what do you like more, freshwater fishing for bass or saltwater fishing? You know, uh, that's a that's a tough one to answer there. I, I really like saltwater fishing a lot. You know, in the summertime, I get to go Kobe fishing all the time. So, man... Yeah, I would have to say bass fishing, uh, freshwater fishing, because I can just about do it all year, all over the country. You know, saltwater is more of the summertime deal for me around home. So 
I would have to say freshwater. Freshwater. Okay. What kind of saltwater fish you you get after? Cobia, cobia. bro. Cobia. Yeah. Good Best eating fish, fish right out there. there, bro. Yeah. Peach you ever meat? have cobia? Yeah. I I don't think I've I've never called one. Oh, that's dude, for sure. They're good. Yeah. They're good. Well, what did, hey, you be you yeah. have to come up and you have to come up and go. We do it in like Ju- July and August. I you, you you know you're I don't know what your schedule is, but it's all sight fishing. Do it from a tower. Plenty of cold beer in the cooler. Ooh. <laughs> I'm in. Ooh, I'm in. I'm going to corner you right now. If, if I come when they're biting, can we film a uh, Going Ike episode together? Absolutely. There you go. Oh, you yeah. heard that. <laughs> done. Yes. He said yes. It's signed. It's done. It's we should, done we should do a Going Brian the Carpenter episode. We should crazy. do a Going the Brian the Carpenter. <laughs> uh, Riz, I know we probably got some IMs coming in right now on questions. Yeah. Uh, let, yeah. Let's hit Jake. What do we got? Yeah. Um, Jake, um, Jake, Jake, question came in from Shadow Basser in North Carolina. Um, what's the best advice for a recreational fisher who, fisherman who fishes all three lakes that you guys fished uh, at, at your last event? Ooh. That's a good one. You, you know, the, the I mean, watch the water level. Uh, cause when the water gets in the bushes on those, especially on Jordan falls, those, those bass are just like bugs Island. If that water gets a foot in those bushes, they're in them. And if the water comes out, then they kind of get out there and get suspended. So the fishing kind of, that's what happened on falls to us. You know, they sucked that water out so bad. Those fish got suspended out there and that, you know, then just didn't want to buy it and all that stuff. But the biggest thing to say, watch the water level, make sure it's up there where it needs to be and, uh, throw, throw a V and M chopstick. Mm. Got it. And then um, Matt E wants to know what makes you determine uh, when you're fishing a stick bait like that whether you're going to go uh, wheat or whether you're going to go weightless or you're going to nail weight it and fish it that way. It just depends on how deep it is. If it's if it's uh, five foot or less, I'm going no weight. If it's five foot or deeper, I'll put like a little bit of nail weight in it just to get it down to the bottom a little bit faster. But you know, it's just let's let the fish kind of dictate how they really want it. You know, if you fish one pocket. And don't get a bite, and then you put a nail weight in it, and go to the next one, and they and you get three bites. Then let the fish kind of tell you the pattern that they want, you know, or the the way they want the bait presented to them. You know, a lot of times they want it fast, a lot of times they want it really, really slow. When you're dead sticking, what do you count to before you move it again? Uh, probably about three, three Pete, or four. You know, Pete, Just, how about if you it hits Pete? the bottom, if it hits the bottom, and he don't, and <laughs> and it doesn't have it, then I'll move it a little bit, and then. You know, by that time, nine times out of ten, when you're when you're wacky worming or doing whatever, you throw it over there and twitch it a couple times and let it fall to the bottom, and one and one should have it. You know, so it's it's basically it's basically just a one two three punch kind of deal. Reel it in, throw it to the next one. Cool, that, and yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for me too. BTC, you throw it out there, let it at the bottom, twitch, twitch, boom, next spot. It's all. It's usually all about the fall. And you're not disgusted when you set the hook. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get over it real quick when that six pounder starts burning line off the spinning rod. Mm. We got some Sanko haters or or in the in the house here, Jake. Do you, do you, do you, have, do you have any uh, you know anything to say to the guys uh, uh, that that don't that feel like the cheating fishing this way? No. I don't think so. Hey, I, I don't care how I take their money. You know, <laughs> <laughs> if they want to be haters, let them be haters. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. All right. So, Jake, we saved the best for last. Uh, here it goes. You know, you've been on the show before. You know, we never let you off the show without the customary part of this interview. Which is the Ike Live Rapid Fire Questions coming through right now. We've got six questions for you tonight. And you remember from being on the show before, we're going to ask you these questions. And the only rule is you got to be totally honest when we ask you these questions. And uh, there's six questions here. If you get four out of the six right, Jake, you are a winner tonight on the Ike Live Rapid Fire Questions. Are you ready to play tonight? Um. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> We're going to start real mild. Question number one. Uh, if you're in Philadelphia or when you're in Philadelphia and you order a cheesesteak, are you doing a cheesesteak wit or wit out? Wit or wit out? Wit out. Wit out. Okay. Hmm. Brian DeCarpenter, is that correct? Is that a right answer or a wrong answer? Uh, does Jake even know what he's answering? <laughs> <laughs> you know what the wit is, Jake? <laughs> Fried onions. Some kind fried of dressing, onions. isn't it? Fried, fried on- onions. Fried onions. Okay. No. All right. Wit no out. fried onions? No fried onions. All right. We're going we're gonna to put that as a maybe. Okay. All right. <laughs> Second question. 
Who can drink more light beer in one sitting? You or JT Kenny? JT Kenny. That's correct. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> correct. JT Kenny can drink more light beer. It's surprising that that's correct. That's correct. Like no, it's JT yeah. Kenny. That is correct. <laughs> Question number three. I think Jake Price stays up later, though. That's true. He might. Carry on. Okay. Question number three. And let me remind everybody Jake's na last name is Prosnick. Uh, Jake, have you had a pierogi since the last <laughs> time you were up here in the studio? In New Jersey. No. No, that's correct. <laughs> I the answer's that correct. The answer. That's right. That's right. No pierogi. Come on, man. Since he's been in New Jersey. Okay. Question number four. Do they pay you the same? And I'm assuming they, when they say do they, I'm assuming they say Major League Fishing and your sponsors. Do they pay you the same amount <laughs> when you win a tournament with a chopstick, a.k.a. Senko? <laughs> Do you get paid the yeah. same amount? <laughs> yes, that's correct. <laughs> correct. It's correct. I could tell that was my question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number five. If, if you get one of these last two right, you're you're a winner here. <laughs> but I thought. Okay, question number five. What's more important to have with you in the boat during a day of fishing? A box of smokes or a pack of chopsticks? A uh, pack of smokes. That's correct! <laughs> pack of smokes. Way more important than chopsticks or Senkos. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Right, That's correct. That's essential. <laughs> not sure that's sending the right message. No, it doesn't matter if it's sending the right message. It's reality. We're in the age of reality. Think Who about cares? The children. About and the, the manatees. Right <laughs> and the manatees. <laughs> All right. And for the, for the slam dunk win, you've already won, but for the slam dunk win, question number six. Drum roll, please. That's so bad. <laughs> if there's only room for one Jacob in the fishing industry, who should it be? Me. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Give your choice. There's only room for one Jacob in the fishing industry. Who should it be? Erwin Jacobs? Jacob Wheeler? Or Jacob Prosnick? Jacob Frost. Ah! The clean sweep. <laughs> there you have it. Wow. I, I, that's that's probably the most correct answer. What if there was only room for two? If there's only room for two. <laughs> well, there's actually three. There, there's three, and they're on the message board right now. Okay. The, the ghost of Jacob Jacob Wheeler's lisp wants to know, <laughs> Jacob Parosnik, do you know what a younder is? Ooh, oh, a younder. And this is from the ghost of Jacob Wheeler's lisp. The ghost no, of Jacob Wheeler's lisp. Do not know what a younder is. I don't know either. Does it say? No. There's, there's no answer. Okay. No. We'll have to he, Google it. West Side. That's, that, that's our homeboy. <laughs> okay. We have something else that came through? <laughs> well, I have the oh, great... That it? I have a, <laughs> Jacob's... Uh, I don't know what we would call this. A Jacobism, which I think is the greatest thing ever, is nine times out of ten it works 100% of the time. <laughs> is that right? That's a good line. It was yeah. said here live tonight. That's awesome. Yeah. I like it. Nice. That's true. I love that. I it's do like, like it. Like too. Uh, it is like a Ron Burgundy. It is like a Ron Burgundy. Man, I tell you, uh, I am. Uh, I'm stoked for you, dude. You, you know, we're 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 competitors, but uh, I've uh, since the day I met you, the one thing I I know is that you work your ass off, and you're a really natural fisherman, and I. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. Too many guys do it in this sport, you know, that, that they don't they're not doing it for the right reason. They're they leverage a lot of other stuff to find fish and catch fish. And Jake, the thing I know about you is you're you're a natural and I, I really, really appreciate that. I'm I'm so happy for you, man. I can't thank you enough for coming on the show and I'm stoked for your win, man. Very stoked for you. I pre I appreciate that. And uh just before we get off, you know the I have to say this, and this is for Livingston Lures. I know, I know that a lot of those guys are watching. And uh, on the the knockout round, you know, I caught an eight four and an eight ten um, to to get me into the top ten. And there was about ten minutes to go, and I uh, pulled up to a place where I had had a bite on like a little rocky bank, and uh, I picked up a Livingston shredder with about ten minutes to go, and I and I threw it out there, and I and I reeled it through there, and I told him, I said, I know that fish is here. And I fired it back out there, and I asked, and I asked the my official about Greg Hackney. I said, 
where where is Hackney at? Because they were battling for 10th place, you know. And I reeled it down, and, and like, my line just went completely. Like, somebody cut my line off, and I I reeled into it, and it come down the boat, and it comes up and jumps. I level with my official, like, Whoa. an 810 Whoa. is I level, and he goes, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> His first three words. And, it and like, I mean, dude, it wouldn't have come off in a month of Sundays. I mean, it had it completely choked down its throat. I had to get, you know. To take the picture with him, me holding it up, I had to dunk it in the water, get the blood off of it, and all that stuff. But it was, it was wow. cool. But you know, guys, if you're looking for a good plug, I know, you know, Mike those Rapala and all that stuff. But Livingston Lures makes some good plugs too. So check them out, LivingstonLures.com. You got That's it. Awesome. You got it with you. Eight ten. Do you have it in front of you, Jake? Um, you had it. I sent it to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that means he pocketed it and no, it went no, right on the show so he picture, could use it it's a picture of my phone oh it's a picture of your phone okay yeah, I, all right we'll put it up we'll put it up later yeah that's awesome man that's cool i i tell you I mean, big ones jump freaks me out but when you don't see the crankbait that's a good sign yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's always you a good can't sign. see the plug it's a good mm -hmm. sign man uh, dude, I'll tell you, Jake, oh, it's great, uh, great having you on tonight. Very, very excited for your win. Do me a favor. You won one. Can yeah. you let me, can you let me at least try to win the next one? Just get, just sure. get all right, let, give me a chance, man. I, <laughs> I, I have a good feeling what you did in the finals might be working at Chickamauga too. <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't count that out. I wouldn't count that out. You know, fish up there snooping around, you know, wanting to oh, spawn, yeah. doing a little deal, you know, it yeah. might be a good deal. Uh, but we will see you, Jake Shed. I'll see you in less than a week. And, uh, man, great win. We really appreciate you having on the show tonight. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Jake, a Congrats. Congrats, Jake. Good man, buddy. Well done. Congrats. Wow. Thank you. What a good win, dude. What a good win. It's a great win. Moral of the story is don't ever listen to BTC. Right. Throw a stick bait. <laughs> dude, win a, a big win $100,000. A lot of big wins with a Senko, dude. A lot of big wins with a Senko. <laughs> Talk today. About that today. <laughs> today, Senko uh, performed. Yep. Is that right? That's yep. what you did, Senko? Either? Yeah. Couldn't buy a bass until we threw a Senko. Yeah. Stick bait. I mean, the biggest win of my career, the Bassmaster Classic win in 2003, some key fish were caught on that bait. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't deny the yeah, effectiveness. It's well, it, it, it's you know? this is its time. Yeah. Right? This yeah. right when they take the flats to spawn, warming water. Pre spawn, post spawn, shallow fish. Yeah. Key. That's its time. It's key. It's key. Hey, man. I'm hungry. All right, let's do that. Uh listen to me. <laughs> we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, finally, we're gonna get to our guest on the couch tonight. We got the Dante and Charlie. When we come back, we're going to be talking Flambo. We'll talk a little bit of history of Flambo. Talk about what we did the last uh, day or two here in New Jersey. Uh, hang in there with us. And also, Pete, we're going to be giving away this backpack, the Ike Flambo backpack, for the like and share contest on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And and to end the show tonight, we're going to open up the phone lines and take some callers. Yeah, so we got some prizes to give away. It's going to be good. Hang in there with us when we come back in the third segment. More Ike Live. Nine times out of ten, works every time. <laughs> I'm respooling my reels, baby. Oh, hush. Come on. Watch your set. Whoa, watch your set there. Come on. Get them close. I got them close. No, he can't. Hold my arms so tight. Oh, all right. Ready? One, two, three. Surprise! Oh, yes. Yes! Woo! It's everything yes. I ever wanted. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Wait. Yes. Yes. No. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah! No, baby, go back! Look, 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 look! Oh, oh, yes! Yes! Yeah, but, but, baby, look! I got you a boat! Mystery Tackle Box is the perfect gift for the fishing fanatic in your life. It's a monthly box filled with some of the most innovative fishing gear on the market, hand-selected by industry professionals. Check out all the different options available at mysterytacklebox.com. Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli here. I love fishing this time of the year. It's cold, it's winter, it's snowing, but if you want to prevent the buildup of ice, use real snot. Every time I'm fishing this time of the year, I put a couple squirts on all my guides, especially the tip, before I start casting. Try that tip when you're fishing under these cold conditions and you're going to catch more fish. See you later. There's a special place in our hearts for the tools of the trade. 
They're what we prep for a good day on the water. They're what we clean after a good day in the field. Flambeau's patented Z-Rust technology protects the gear of today from rust and corrosion. Z-Rust, for the performance of tomorrow. Preserve, perform, repeat. You work hard to catch your fish. TH Marine has two products to ensure your fish survive. The Oxygenator injects 100% pure oxygen into your live well. That increases fish survival by 35%. For the perfect combo, add G-Juice live well treatment. It calms fish, stops bleeding, removes ammonia, and replaces slime coat. Get an Oxygenator and G-Juice and keep your fish alive.